Hank, you have always been special. The most talented airbender I have ever known. I never asked to be special. But you are. You are the Avatar. The world needs the Avatar. It needs you, Aang. The Fire Nation has destroyed everything in their path. Right. There goes the savior of the world. The world needs you. Remember what it is we're really fighting for. The ones we love. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Netflix just released another new Avatar The Last Airbender trailer for the live-action series, this time with more footage of a couple more characters from the original series. I know there's tons of Cabbage Man questions. Don't worry, I'll talk about him, too. And they revealed more details about how they changed the original storyline from book one to fit the new episodes, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will do episode videos just like I did for the original series and for Legend of Korra back in the day. It'll feel so weird doing Avatar videos again. Speaking of which, the other really cool news, they haven't talked about it recently, but Mike and Brian are making an animated Avatar The Last Airbender movie with the adult version of the gang, or Team Aang, however you want to think about them, set after the events of Book 3, which is basically them doing a version of the comics. Now we're making a movie, our first movie. And so that always, as an artist, that, that was like really alluring to me. I can't really wrap my head around the final mix and the final color correction on the feature. Now we're talking about doing multiple projects at the same time, including feature films. That movie isn't supposed to come till 2025. It could have been delayed till 2026 because of the strikes last year, but they're also working on a new animated Avatar series with the Earthbender Avatar after Korra set forward in the timeline. That's supposed to release either right before or right after the brand new movie. I think it'll come right after. There are a couple other animated Avatar movies that they announced. I'll talk about them at the end of the video because they're a little bit further off. But it is a really good time to be an Avatar fan. Like Avatar fans are going to be eating good for like the next 30 years. They'll be Avatar till we're all old and gray. Probably the biggest new thing in this new trailer is Aang talking to Monk Gyatso. This has to be a flashback before he went into the ice 100 years ago. Their conversation basically plays out similar to their conversation in the flashbacks in the original show. The difference is the way they actually frame the scenes, and this is one of the big differences with the new live-action Netflix series, like some of the changes they made. They're actually showing the genocide of the Air Nomads. So this scene with Aang in Monk Yatso is us watching it happening, like it's probably right before he tries to bail on the Southern Air Temple and gets lost in the ice. Right before Fire Lord Sozin shows up with the Fire Nation and attacks. In the original show, it's presented as brief flashbacks with Aang remembering his conversations with Monk Gyatso in the circumstances that led to him being trapped in the ice for a hundred years. So this time we're actually seeing it go down. There's footage from a couple other characters' backstories that they do with the same thing with like Zuko getting his scar. It's not just a flashback this time of someone remembering it. We're actually seeing it go down. What you see in the Aang scene is pretty accurate. Aang found out he was the next Avatar at a very young age. He couldn't handle the pressure at first. Monk Yatso became more of a surrogate father to him at the Southern Air Temple, so he tried to hide a lot of the really difficult stuff from him until the very last minute. Because he was the Avatar, he was born an airbending prodigy. He got his airbender tattoos before he learned he was the Avatar, though. Like, he just grew up thinking that he was a prodigy. He's meant to be the youngest airbender in the history of the air nomads to get his tattoos. Janora was like the next youngest person much, much later in the timeline. Typically, it took a lot longer for air nomads to earn their tattoos because you have to become a master. So Aang spent his early life up to about age 12 traveling to the other air temples around the world, learning airbending techniques, getting Appa, his sky bison. Then around the time he was turning 12, Sozin's Comet had already come and the Fire Nation had already started waging war simultaneously on all the other nations. That had been going on for a while. And because Monk Gyatso had been a close friend of Avatar Roku, and so had Sozin, Gyatso knew that Sozin would eventually come for the Air Nomads, hoping to eradicate the next Avatar before he could master all four elements, challenging him, knowing that this would become a really big problem, like eventually Sozin would come for Aang. 
Thus begins the genocide of the Air Nomads, so Monk Yatsu, knowing that this would happen, decides to tell Aang that he was the Avatar around the time he turned 12. Originally, they would have waited much longer till he came of age, but because he was only 12, like he's still a little kid, the burden of knowledge of the pending war with the Fire Nation, what the rest of the world expected of him as the Avatar, was just way too much for him to handle. So like a typical little kid, he took Appa, immediately ran away after hearing the news of becoming the Avatar, and was caught in the storm at sea. His body basically went into the Avatar state to protect himself forming the ice shield around him, and his body just stayed in the Avatar state for the entire hundred year period that he was in the ice. Some people forget that. He was in the Avatar state for a hundred years. That's actually the reason why he died so young. He was only 66 when he died. Normally, Avatars can live much, much longer than normal humans. Like Avatar Kyoshi, probably one of the longest lived ones, lived till she was about 200 years old. Being in the Avatar state for so long taxed Aang's body so much that it just gave out early. We get more footage inside the Southern Air Temple too before the Fire Nation attacks, and I really think this firebender attacking them inside the temple is Fire Lord Sozin himself, which is another change from the original series. During the original show, Fire Lord Sozin wasn't with the soldiers that were actually killing all the air nomads, like he wasn't killing all the air nomads himself, he just stayed behind and ordered the hit on all the different air temples. This also gets to the next big change the showrunner said they made to the original show, during the original book one or season one, Sozin's Comet was a huge ticking clock that they constantly referenced throughout the episodes, and the idea was that once he came out of the ice, Aang had to make it to the Crescent Island Fire Temple by the Winter Solstice because of how fast Sozin's Comet was approaching so that he could learn all the things they needed to learn from Avatar Roku. The actual comet itself didn't come back and boost the powers of Ozai, all the other firebenders on the planet, until book three, or what will be season three. But they constantly reference the timeline of the comet on the show, like the comet's coming, it's getting closer, it's getting closer, and Aang having to learn to master all four elements before it came so that he could defeat Fire Lord Ozai. The whole idea is that in order for avatars to enter the avatar state at will, they had to be able to master all four elements. So when Aang was entering the avatar state during book one, it was more on instinct. If he were to get into a fight with Ozai during book one, he wouldn't be able to enter the Avatar state unless he was about to die. And it would just be his body automatically acting to protect itself. And if he still couldn't master all four elements and enter the Avatar state at will by the time the comet came, the comet itself would make Ozai vastly, vastly more powerful because of the proximity. What the showrunner said happened though is that because they didn't think that they'd be able to get season two out, the show hasn't been renewed for season two, at least officially, so it might be two years before they actually get it out. And the kids on the show playing all the characters age so quickly that they're probably going to have to add a time jump that wasn't in the original show. So in order to give them a little bit more time for him to master all four elements and then to get through all these different seasons for the original show, they just removed a lot of references to the comet that were in that original series. Generally, I think the idea is the live action show is going to probably take them like four to five years to completely finish if they don't get seasons out every single year, which it doesn't sound like they'll be able to do. So the showrunner was kind of preempting this, saying that they're probably going to add time jumps between book one, book two, and book three to explain why the actors look so much older by the time book three rolls around. Whereas on the original show, only about two years goes by between the beginning and the end of the series, and pretty much everybody looks the exact same, with a few exceptions like Zuko probably looks the most different because he started wearing his hair differently. Aang also did start letting his hair grow out during book three, but that was mostly just to hide the fact that he was the last airbender on the planet. That would have given him away pretty quickly when he was trying to learn firebending because at that time in history, he was the actual last airbender on the planet. That's why the whole show was called Avatar The Last Airbender. All the other airbenders weren't born until he and Katara started having children much later in the timeline, and then again, they started coming back in force when Harmonic Convergence happened in Korra much later in the timeline, when the spirit world became connected with the physical world again. That was viewed as more the true restoration of the air nomads, so in present day, after the events of Korra, there are a ton of airbenders again. A lot of people asking about some of the other major characters too, like where is Cabbage Man? How come we haven't seen Cabbage Man? Technically, he is in the trailer. When they're entering Omashu, you can actually see his cart here with all of his cabbages right at the entrance, right at the gates here. I believe the person playing Cabbage Man is just the voice actor who did him on the original series. I think he just came back and he's playing him in live action now. 
A lot of people asking about Toph, too. What's going on with Toph? Because she didn't show up till book two in the original series, I'm not expecting to see Toph during season one. They might just wait till they actually start filming season two to actually cast an actress. Maybe, maybe there's a post credit scene or some references to her at some point during the season, but I don't think we'll actually see an actress as the character until they get to season two. Probably one of the other biggest differences, too, is they made Fire Lord Ozai and Azula much bigger characters during season one. So Fire Lord Ozai is meant to be the main villain of the entire series, but he doesn't really become a huge character until book three. For the most part, Avatar plays out a little bit like Star Wars with Darth Vader and the Emperor or like Lord of the Rings with Saruman and Sauron. You start out with the mid boss, then you work your way up to the main boss. It sounds like there's going to be a lot more scenes with Ozai during season one, and they also made Azula a much bigger character so that she doesn't just show up at the very end of the season in like a post credit scene the way that she did in the original book one. She doesn't really become one of the major antagonists until book two in the original series. For the actual live action series, they said they wanted to flesh out her character arc way more, so just expect Azula to get way more screen time, way more scenes that weren't in the original series. Most of the Azula fans out there, and I think most people are Azula fans, will actually just be happy about this. Like, yay, they're giving Azula more material. I cannot wait to see her go just completely batshit crazy during this. My only minor complaint about the way they've revealed the Azula character right now is that in all the character posters they've given her, she just has the red flames, and Azula is famous for having blue flames because she is a firebending prodigy. So at some point, hopefully like in the next couple of weeks, they'll correct that and they'll release a new poster for her with blue flame instead of just the regular flames. We haven't actually seen her firebending during any of the trailer footage here. Like she's firing the bow and that's about it. I believe during the actual series, when she does firebend, it will be the blue flame. For the most part, all their bending effects actually look pretty solid. I think that was one of the things that took them the longest to figure out how to do that with special effects and not make it look weird. We'll probably get a couple more trailers before the series drops, so of course I'll do more videos as we get more of that stuff. If you have any questions or bonus videos you want to request, just let me know in the comments. Cannot wait to do more Avatar videos. It has been so long since we've done Avatar videos. Click here for that other brand new Avatar The Last Airbender trailer with a whole bunch more Easter eggs, and click here for that new Invincible Season 2 Episode 5 trailer video because that series is also coming back really soon too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.